So this is going to be my first point. When we talk about the cleanest city in Africa, what comes in your mind? We have to mention the name. We just have to talk about the cleanest city in Africa. And you so much can know what we're talking about. Definitely. Definitely. As long as you are talking about the cleanest city in Africa, mm. Mm. it's Rwanda. One of the cleanest cities in the world. Mm. Chigali. You can't mention a cleanest city and you don't talk about Chigali in Rwanda. Mm. Or a few of the cleanest cities in the world. Forget about even mm. Africa. Mm. And you say such a statement without mentioning Rwanda, mm. then you will not be doing any justice at all to that word of the cleanest. And I think if you can, uh, I can elaborate further, you say mm. I think they are among the first first people to ban polythene bags. You realize that polythene bags bring a lot of that, a lot of commotion in and around even our homes. Like, you know, in Uganda, we still have polythene bags. <coughs> And you can yeah. see what is happening with us. So they spent almost like more than 20 years when they burned the cavera. So you know where the cleanliness, uh, where the cleanliness comes from. And I think also there are stringent measures of enforcing, you see, like the things of walking on grass. You know, there's orderliness. The more you don't walk on grass, you don't make those funny, funny routes like you see everywhere you move. So sure, we should give credit where it is due. They have the cleanest capital city in Africa. Okay. Thank you, Julius, for that good point and for that explanation. I think people who are watching now, you know, if you didn't know one of the, that uh, Chigari is one of the cleanest cities, now you know. So number two, Rwanda has one local language that is spoken across the country. They don't have these other small, small tribes? No, it's uh, Chinyarwanda mm -hmm. across. You sweep across the whole country is Chinyarwanda as their local language. Because they have other languages other than Chinyarwanda, mm -hmm. like English, Swahili, French. Those are foreign languages. They are not their languages. Foreign, yeah. Yeah, so if you are talking about uh, the almost among the only countries with one sweeping language across where you come from the west east yeah. north south and you can still communicate comfortably yeah. without saying ah oh why i've reached the the oh, oh, i've reached like the maasai what do they speak i've reached the Karenjins, mm. how do they speak or if you're in uganda you say now i'm from uganda minnesota how do they speak so as long as you're there one local language Okay. Number three, land of a thousand hills. Are you still there? I'm very there. Okay. Yeah, of course. So when they're talking about land of a thousand hills, it's the only <coughs> country that has got that title. Mm. I can confirm. But of course, the name also comes from the hills. It's made up of a thousand hills. People should know that. That's why. That's where the name comes from. So they they hear land of a thousand hills. Minus even mentioning Rwanda, automatically it has to be Rwanda. Number four. They have those special days in the month like Car Free Day and then the Uganda. Elaborate uh, those two points to our listeners so that they get to understand what it means like. Half free day, like what's about that day? Then also the Umuganda, what's the meaning of that? Because people are watching and they may not understand what you're talking about. Yeah, of course, Car Free Day, I think, was just brought in to really encourage people to do the exercises, start walking. Why would you always be driving a car all the time? You know, those are some of the things that also affect us health wise. Mm. So they brought it in. As the day, I think it happens twice a month, if I'm not mistaken, the first Sunday of the month and the third Sunday of the month. You can ride your bicycle, you can walk on foot. Those who like, like skating can use their shoes, you can use those skateboards. You know, it's actually a fun day if you're there. Because even the there are no people himself, like. 
Yeah. There are no people like who will, uh, who will refuse and say, I have my car, I want to go this place, I have to go. There are not those people who will still drive anyway. The ambulances, the police cars will be doing that unless you have an emergency, surely. Why would you want to antagonize such a beautiful thing? You know the way you are moving in Kampala and you are feeling cars are going to knock you. This is the only mm. day, you, if we are assuming that it's in Uganda, is the only day you can have even walk, you sleep, walk, and you are 100% sure that the motorcycle will not knock you, <laughs> the taxi will not knock you. So it's a fun day. That's the car free day. It happens twice a month. The first Sunday of the month and the third Sunday of the month. Then no wonder Uganda it's a Sunday. Is mm. Yes. Then Umuganda is community yep. work. Is I think if I'm not I don't recall properly, but I think it has to be the last week, but mm. on a Saturday. So it's okay. like community work. It encourages people, all families. They start, you start cleaning from your own home. You clean the house, you clean the compound, move and clean outside your compound, then continue and enter other communities which are outside your community. It's a good thing, actually. May I see it? We actually need it. I, I remember our great, our grandfather used to tell us that they used to have those things of Muganda, those days to work for a community. So for them, it's permanent, it's on their calendar. You have to do it, whether you want it or not, because that cleanliness is needed. And it starts from home. Forget about saying that they take, they've taken you to the market. They tell you, clean your house, clean your compound, clean outside your gate, then come towards the road, then somewhere, somehow, there's the way they arrange them. And like if it's your village, you have where you're supposed to meet after the Muganda. Then they give you the programs which the government has or any other communication you may want to have that day. So if you're talking about Muganda, or the Bazoom might call it community work, yeah. you don't have to mention Rwanda. It's automatic. Mm -hmm. When you talk of the car free day, it's the only yeah. country which has car free oh. day in the yeah. whole world. So mm. speak of those two things. Don't talk about the name. People will know. We will know. Oh, no wonder it's like in this city because I can't imagine like in Uganda having a car free day or like saying that we are going to clean. Oh, some things. <laughs> they are for specific countries. Number five, talk about the gorillas in Rwanda. Yeah, you know, of course, the gorillas are among the most endangered animals. They mm -hmm. are not even so many, wherever they are. Because after, I think they are. You could only find them in Congo, Rwanda, Uganda, plus those are few who, which have been taken like in those European countries, but they are like in the zoo. But here, they are moving freely in the parks. So you cannot speak about gorillas when I was talking about Rwanda. When you talk about species such as a gorilla, of course, what comes to mind but, are three countries. Mm -hmm. Uganda, Congo, Rwanda. So by the fact that we are talking about Rwanda, we cannot leave out the gorilla part of it. Yeah. Okay, number six, which is the final one. More women in parliament. Yeah, it has set that record for the last yeah. maybe 10 years. They have more women in parliament than men in the whole world. So when you are talking about empowering women, yeah. Surely, and you do, and you leave out that name called Rwanda, you're mm -hmm. doing a disservice to the world because it needs to be used as a good example. If you are to empower women wherever we are, we need to ask them how they manage to do it. Because you see, when you come to our countries, people want to feel that men are more superior. What? So for them, how? What did they do? How did they end up there? We need to go learn from them. So talking about uh, woman empowerment and you live out Rwanda, sure, it's a joke. Okay. Thank you so much, Julius, for today's video, for allowing to be on this live again. Those were the six unique points about Rwanda. Yeah, we are still talking about some other countries. Please subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. And always uh, turn on that bell so that you get to know the next time that will be uploaded, you're the first person to watch. So, 
uh, we have come to the end of this video and we still have other countries that we'll be talking about. So please stay tuned for the next video. Thank you, Julius, for joining my live today. And bye-bye. Unless you have anything you want to say. Okay. Not really. Bye. <laughs> okay. Bye.